Well, a bill banning the sale and manufacture of assault style weapons here in Colorado faces a major test today. It will go to committee as part of a long heated legislative process. It's one of many gun control bills in response to more gun violence across the state and country. Denver 7's Jessica Crawford is at our state capitol and Jessica, the bill is drawing passionate debate from both sides. That's right. And yes, this is a very heated topic. About 400 citizens have signed up to testify today and Republicans are promising 24 hours of debate. So what this bill does is it first of all spells out what would be considered an assault weapon. It prohibits people from manufacturing, importing, purchasing or selling an assault weapon. The bill also prohibits people from possessing a rapid fire trigger activator. A violation would be a class two misdemeanor. The prohibition does not apply to some groups like officers or licensed gun dealers selling remaining assault weapon inventory outside of the state after July 1st. The bill reads in part, assault weapons in civilian hands endanger Colorado streets, stores, restaurants, places of worship, music venues, schools, movie theaters, and communities at large. With an assault weapon, even a firearms novice can perpetrate a mass casualty incident. A Colorado House Republican statement said the following politicians need to hear from and be told it's not okay to make criminals out of honest law abiding gun owners. The bill imposes a mandatory civil penalty of $250,000 for licensed gun dealers that actually sell assault weapons after a certain date. Live from the state capitol, I'm Jessica Crawford, Denver 7. And this is the latest gun bill from lawmakers. They already passed four other measures. The first two raise the minimum age and create a three day waiting period to purchase a gun. They're also expanding Colorado's red flag law and they're making it easier for people uh, victims of gun violence to sue gun manufacturers. All four still need to be signed by the governor. Yeah, the Supreme Court will hear the case of a convicted Colorado stalker today. Billy Counterman is accused of sending hundreds of messages on social media to singer songwriter Coles Whalen. Counterman is out of jail after spending four and a half years there, but now he's asking the high court to throw out the law that put him in jail. Colorado law says that uh, communications with someone become illegal when a reasonable person would suffer serious emotional distress from those communications. And authorities say uh, the t messages uh, that Billy sent to Waylon made her fear for her life. Uh, she said she no longer performs in public. Billy Counterman says he never intended to harm Waylon, though. He claims the First Amendment protects his ability to communicate with a public figure. Colorado Springs has decided to counter sue the builder of the new visitor center at Pikes Peak at the summit. Our partners at Business Den report the city is now claiming the west parking lot sways severely and it will cost more than $400,000 to fix. It says GE Johnson, the contractor, refuses to make repairs. Last month, the builder claimed the city refused to reimburse them for work delays caused by the city's slowness and the pandemic. The building was still completed after three years of work in 2021. The city is standing by its decision to not pay the company and denies it caused any delay. Commerce City Police are still looking for the driver who hit and killed a 16 year old girl. Kara Kincaid was walking home last week when she was hit on 76th Avenue and Layden Lane right next to Monaco Elementary. Her family says she was using the crosswalk. She didn't deserve this. She was just, she was just a baby. Very tall baby, which is a baby nonetheless. Well, the tragedy has prompted community members to push for more safety measures. City Council unanimously approved installing speed bumps near all Commerce City schools. And that's what we needed to do last night was truly take tangible and executable uh, action to, to, to make something happen. All these school districts, they need speed bumps. Now, these guys are coming through this neighborhood, all rates of speed. City leaders say construction is starting in June and those speed bumps should be installed in time for the next school year to start. A Larimer County search team has found the body of a man they believe to be 53 year old Jerry Albright. Deputies say Albright left his home in Glen Haven Friday night and then texted his family the next day that he was lost in the mountains. Investigators were able to recover the body off of steep terrain. The coroner will officially determine how he died. 
A foundation created by voters has now given away more than $100 million. Back in 2018, Denver voters created a new sales tax to fund mental health and substance misuse treatment. It hasn't, mental health and substance misuse haven't been traditionally well funded, easy to access, or relevant for many communities. And so we're really investing in how, how we increase access, how we get a better fit of care and more care over time. Yeah, Caring for Denver has helped more than 200 organizations in Denver. You can see all of the grant recipients on the Caring for Denver website. Well, Ball Arena will be flipping from the ice to the court today. In fact, the process is probably already underway inside. Uh, it's all worth it, though, because the playoff action is happening there all week. The Nuggets will have game two of their series against the Timberwolves tonight. They won game one. The Avs were not as fortunate last night against the Seattle Kraken. Maybe beginner's luck for them. This is their first playoff game since starting NHL play last season, and they struck first. It was 1-0 Seattle in the first period before the Avs could tie it back. They got an assist from Nate McKinnon to Miko Rantanen for the score, but they were shut out the rest of the way, and the Avs fell 3-1. Of course, last year's playoffs, different story. The Avs swept the opening round and never trailed a series. So already it's a tough road to defend their championship. Game two is Thursday night at Ball Arena, and then the series goes to Seattle for two games. Meanwhile, the Nuggets are trying to continue their march through the first round. They dominated game one, but head coach Michael Malone expects to see a tougher T-Wolves team. You're going to see an ultra-aggressive Minnesota Timberwolves team, especially Anthony Edwards and Cole Anthony Towns. So um, my job is to keep our guys um, humble and coach them, hold them accountable. It was a great game, no doubt, but you celebrate for a few minutes and you get ready. Now, Nikola Jokic is questionable for game two. Uh, he's working through a sore wrist and tight calf muscle. He did practice yesterday. Of course, all five. Nugget starters were in double figures for game one. Tip off is at 8 p.m. Well, many of us collect something, uh, some of us smaller than others. Uh, we'll show you one man in Boulder's collection after 60 years of yard sale hunting. And the Colorado farmers are getting pretty high tech to care for their crops.